how I am. I'm deeply fascinated with this. Um. <laughs> All right, let's let's take a look. You know what? Maybe maybe we'll be surprised. Maybe we will become QAnon supporters. Okay? Who who knows? This this could be this could be one of the the defining moments of our collective lives. Okay? Maybe QAnon has good evidence. Maybe uh maybe this Georgian uh representative can uh, make a good case for QAnon using you know win us over with facts and logic as uh as uh, Benny Shapiro is fond of saying. Uh, the right employees. So let's take a look. Great radio stations across the land. JoePags.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's email, parlor app, also the live video feed. It's all right there at the website. The Joe Pags Show. Glad to have you here. Really glad to have this young lady on. She is running for um, District 14 as a Republican candidate out of Georgia. It's Marjorie Taylor Greene. Mar I do have to say, I don't know if this is jo Joe Pags. Um, Joe Pags, he has a really good voice. I enjoy listening to this man already, okay? Um, I do need to look at how long this is, though. Well, just a okay, it's only it's only 15 minutes. We can get through this. I had this young lady on. She is running for um, District 14 as a Republican candidate out of Georgia. It's Marjorie Taylor Greene. Marjorie, how are you? I'm great. Thank you, Joe. Really a pleasure to see you. Nice to meet you, as I said moments ago. You have really started a fire uh, in the in the sort of the election process in Georgia in a very good way. I was telling you a second ago. Those, those good, those good. <laughs> I just have to say, maybe maybe 2020 isn't the place, to, isn't the time to joke about starting fires in a good way when like literally half the country is on fire. <laughs> But that's a real big nitpick, okay? It's a, it's a big nitpick. I just find it very funny. If the Democrats can't stand you, Hell yeah, you're doing Biden something right. Marjorie, they can't stand you. I mean, you're okay with that, right? I, I'm totally fine because, you know what? I can't stand their policies of socialism. So we're, we're in agreement. Okay. She's talking about me. She's talking about me and my policy of socialism. And I have soup. I'm a soup socialist. Uh, I do have to say though, guys, it no, this is this is soup for my family, okay? It's soup for my family, guys. Um uh, but I do have to say, like the idea that the Democrats at all resent like like resemble what a socialist platform would look like is absolutely laughable. Oh, uh, Crash, here, I'll, I'll define socialism for you very quickly. Socialism is an economic system in which workers have control over the means of production and in which, uh, to varying degrees, depending on the kind of socialism, um, your economy is significantly decommodified. So, for example, my political position is that people should be market socialists. And uh, that entails basically a slow transition from private companies to uh, worker co-ops. And worker co-ops are already a thing that we've had for centuries. They're very effective and efficient. All of the data we have on them shows that they are generally superior to private companies. Um, and then as for decommodification, like we have a bunch of research that shows giving houses to homeless people is actually a net benefit for our economy. Um, and uh, there, there's a lot of research out there that shows decommodifying certain elements of our economy, like uh, housing, food, electricity, water, have general benefits for everybody. It, it, it lifts everyone up. You know, the, the rising tide lifts all boats kind of uh, mentality there. Um, and with market socialism, there's still room for, like, luxury goods. There's still room for... Um, you know, the economic activity and incentives that uh, markets uh, give our economy today. So that's what I ad advocate for in a nutshell. Um, the Democratic Party right now, at, in no part of its platform, is advocating for decommodifying anything and is also not advocating for workers having any means of control over the production of their labor. So, yeah, n nah. <laughs> Just nah. <laughs> Uh, so what is the SAS acronym? What does that stand for? Save America, Stop Socialism. 
And and I've seen some some people who have written about you, and they they're acting as if that's somehow a negative. We want to stop socialism, don't we? We see what's happening in Venezuela. The Bernie Sanders lie about. Also, when it comes to Venezuela, um, they don't have worker control over the means of production or decommodification of any part of their economy. They're just a um, what, what's called a nanny state. And the nanny state is still a capitalist society that just has um, a strong social safety net, which is different than a socialist state. So they're actually not, not, not a socialist state at all. Sweden isn't true. That's not what they're pushing. They're pushing basically what's happening in Venezuela. And, and you stay saying stop socialism. It's a cool acronym, SAS. But at the same time, it really does mean something. That's really what's on the way, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, you see the Democrat. None of these people can actually define socialism, by the way. Like, notice they always compare to, like, another country. But they aren't actually talking about what socialism means, you know, what the economic system entails. They aren't talking about any of these things. They're talking about, wow, look at that shithole country over there. We don't want to be like that. Except their comparison is largely based on, or, like, the negative comparison is largely a result of, like, external influences to the country, like sanctions or embargoes on certain nations leading to a drastic decline in the quality of life because they can't engage in international trade stuff like that uh turns out that um that kind of behavior tends to put a damper on uh economies tends to make food harder to procure especially in a world that is growing increasingly interconnected so Yeah, exactly. Like, basically, Floofy Boy is com completely correct. You could be comparing, like, the United States to a country like Denmark, where they have a similarly strong social safety net. It's still not socialist in any shape or form, um, but it is basically along the same lines as Venezuela, but there are, uh, you know, you, you can't point to it and say it's a shithole, so that's why these people never bring it up party they've turned so far left they're no longer an american party they're an anti-american party and it's ah uh, uh, yes the the political party that hates the country it lives in yes that is generally a very positive and productive political movement to join it's not it's easy to see anyone can read the Bernie Sanders Joe Biden manifesto themselves, and it's shocking to me they actually call their plans for America a manifesto because we've heard that term before and a communist manifesto. And their policies are. I I do have to say I don't think that this woman has ever read the communist manifesto. I don't think that's I don't think that's the case. She's just using like word association. Uh. But for the sake of argument, let's just see. Yeah. I'm trying to see here. Who calls it the Bernie Sanders manifesto because when I by the way when I search this I come up with Wall Street Journal opinion an article called the Biden Sanders manifesto um but when I look at the rest I'm mostly just seeing joint policy uh or like the New York Post saying it's called the lefty manifesto um yeah, I'm I'm not actually seeing a document called Yeah. Oh, I I'm seeing like a lot of news outlets calling it manifesto, but here's what they're actually talking about. The Biden Sanders Unity Task Force recommendations combating the climate crisis and pursuing environmental justice. Huh, weird. Manifesto, 
uh, doesn't actually appear anywhere in this document. It's pretty, pretty strange. Pretty strange. Let's take a look at the, uh, the, uh, different positions of this manifesto. Um, yeah, yeah, it turns out recommendations doesn't quite sound as, uh, evil or nefarious, uh, to an American audience, right? So you have to, you have to twist it a little bit to call it a manifesto. So they want to com combat the climate crisis. I mean, you want to be able to live on a planet, don't you? You want your kids to be able to live on a planet, don't you? pursuing environmental justice, you want to be able to uh, enforce policies that lead to a, a planet that your kids can live on, don't you? Let's, uh, let's take a look at the other uh, parts of this platform, okay? You know, one day maybe we'll go more in depth on this, okay? Uh, protecting communities by reforming our criminal justice system. Well, that sounds good. I, I, I believe the majority of uh, the United States is in, is in favor of Criminal justice reform, actually. Uh, let's let's take a look real quick. Criminal justice reform, popular yeah popularity of criminal justice reform. Oh wow! Here here's the thing: ninety one percent of Americans support criminal justice reform. ACLU polling finds, huh? Weird. Weird how that works. It seems pretty popular. I mean, we could get into the uh, we could get into the weeds with this again. Not right now because I don't feel like it, and uh, I feel like I would need to do a lot of reading, and uh, that's not fun to watch me do on stream. Uh, building a stronger, fairer economy. Well, that sounds pretty good. I mean, like, especially when the majority of people in this country are uh, dirt poor. Um. When you consider that if our wages had kept up with the productivity uh, generated by Americans, that the average salary in this country would be over a hundred thousand. Um, you know, building a fairer economy sounds like a really good thing. Uh, oh, responding to co the COVID nineteen pandemic, having some kind of a response to that would probably be a really good thing, as well as a response to uh, the greatest economic recession we've experienced since the Great Depression. Um, all right. Protecting workers and families and creating millions of jobs across America. Hot diggity dang. Sign me up for more jobs and protecting workers and families. Uh, raising wages and promoting workers' rights. Wow, this sounds like something that the majority of Americans can get behind. Enacting robust work fa family policies. Uh, investing in the engines of job creation. Dang, this all sounds pretty dope, yo. Putting home ownership in reach and guarantee guaranteeing safe housing for every American. Man, this manifesto sure sounds pretty communist to me. Leveling the economic playing field. Man, all all of this, you know, really when you boil it down, it, it talks about, uh, I clearly talks about, uh, putting workers in control of all of their workplaces and uh, decommodifying the economy and also dis dissolving the state. Uh, obviously those, yeah, wow, ensuring equitable access to banking and financial services. Wow, what a, what a communist idea. Closing the racial wealth gap. How, how, how dare the uppity blacks want to have as much money as white families on average? Wow, what a, what a communist idea. Building a fair system of international trade. Wow. International trade? How communist. This all sounds pretty capitalist, guys. <laughs> uh, tackling runaway corporate concentration. This is actually really good. I, I don't see a lot of people talking about this, by the way. But corporate concentration is the, um, is the process by which companies tend to consolidate in cities because that's where most people are and it limits the amount of opportunity in rural areas um, in, a, in a capitalist economy so that if you live in a rural area you wind up getting shafted by these multinational corporations who are really just looking to be as efficient with their investments as possible so if you have systems that tackle that then you that means you can have rural companies you know large companies based in rural areas and providing uh jobs for people out there so that like small towns don't go completely 
under the water if a company decides to move somewhere else. Um, guaranteeing a secure and dignified retirement? How communist. Wow. Providing a world-class education in every zip code. I... Guys, this is a long-ass document. I haven't even gone through all of it, but I could probably keep talking about all of these different things. Look at... Wow, yeah, this this Unity Task Force tackling issues of transportation and uh, I investing in infrastructure. Wow, what a, what communist ideas. Um, and again, I cannot stress this enough. This is a task force set of recommendations. It's not a manifesto. It's not. It's not communist. It. It's not that at all. Um. So I humbly submit that people who are calling it that and trying to fearmonger about it don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Let's watch the rest of this fucking interview. Are outlined in the first 100 days of a Joe Biden presidency, he will pass the Green New Deal, re-enter the Iran deal, he will re-enter the Paris Climate a Treaty. They want to actually take over our health care, uh, private. They're like, do people like this think that the entire world is socialist? Because, like, you realize the Paris, the Paris Climate Accord is an accord among all kinds of different countries that have different economic systems. It's not a socialist idea to engage in diplomacy, right? Like, France isn't a socialist state. France is capitalist. I, uh, like... How is that a socialist idea? System and, and put it under a government system. And if anyone doesn't realize that that is actually socialism, then they're very uninformed and they've been too busy watching CNN where they get lied to every single day. Here. I have the perfect thing for this, okay? Socialism is when the government does stuff. And it's more socialism, the more stuff it does. And if it does a real lot of stuff, it's communism. <laughs> this is... This is one of my favorite memes, because it's not, uh... <laughs> That, that's how capitalists tend to think, or, or a lot of conservatives try and uh, paint um, the uh, socialism, when that's absolutely not the case. Taylor Green, she's running for District 14 Republican in the great state of Georgia, and I hope you win by a landslide. Well, what's interesting here to me is that you just named a bunch of stuff that's verifiably true. Joe, Joe Biden says he's repealing the Trump tax cuts on day one. I mean, mm -hmm. he can't do that. He needs Congress to do that, but that's what he wants to do. And now he's lying and saying, well, no, only. Well, yeah, presidents run on platforms of what they would want to do. They don't. It, it's not like presidents only run on things that they can do via executive orders, right? All right. Only for people over 400,000 a year. He never said that. He said he's going to repeal all the tax cuts that. Yeah, and then he clarified for people make like for everyone making under four hundred thousand dollars a year, your tax cuts aren't going to be undone. He clarified that he can do that. He he can actually do that. He's done it in multiple town halls. We've we've heard him on this Twitch channel literally say the words. But anyway, that means everybody who pays taxes would see a tax increase. He wants to re-enter the Paris Climate Accord that punishes America. Doesn't make China. The Paris Climate Accord doesn't punish America. It just is a non-binding, like, diplomatic agreement that says America will aim for X amount of carbon emissions in X amount of time. That's all it does. It doesn't actually have any, like, enforceable power on the United States. It's a diplomatic gesture to get us all on the same page um, and to... Uh, <sighs> Basically, like, it's, it's just not the case.
And you know what? You're right, Crash 35. Like my part, my problem is that it takes so much more time to untangle this kind of bullshit um, than it does to just say things. Like, but also I find it very uh, interest. I, I find it more interesting to disentangle this bullshit because I want to know how to be able to talk with people like this. Um, I want to be able to figure out how they're thinking. Um, I, I want to be able to reach these people and, uh, be able to turn them back into free-thinking, uh, Americans. Would you like a woman president? I would have no problem with a woman president. I know, or India do anything for 30 years, what? and he wants to re-enter the Iran deal where Iran laughed at us, and on the day they signed the deal, they chanted death to America in their parliament. So, I mean, oh. there's a Is that true? Let's find out if that's true. Let's see. I mean, they did chant death to America after they sent, like, after we assassinated their top general. I feel like that's a pretty mild response. Um... What about, what about later on or earlier? <sighs> Let's see, all of these stories I'm finding are from when we assassinated Suleimani. All right, I've dug, I've dug through this enough. I'm going to just say this is probably bullshit. Attachment there between how you and I feel and how Joe Biden feels. Why, why is the American populace confused? It's actually pretty simple, isn't it? it? It is, because President Trump has actually been running for his re-election against the mainstream media for four years now. And the main... I, I do need to point out that the president shouldn't be running for office for his term in... Like, during his term in office. Right? Like, the fact that Donald Trump has been running for re-election since he got into office is something that is um, unheard of in politics. Mostly because the president is expected to, you know, be doing president stuff and not being on the campaign trail for four years while he's the president. Mainstream media has been lying to the American people. They have lied about President Trump. They have lied about what Democrat policies actually are. And, and here's the issue. We're watching it unfold right in front of our eyes where the media has a complete blackout on Hunter Biden's black on, on his laptop. And, and they are completely hiding the truth about how hunter biden and joe biden's brother let's just take a look real quick i'm gonna type in the words and you guys can watch me do it hunter biden laptop let's take a look at this uh media blackout because um let's, let's actually just just take a take a look you know these these top stories fox news newsweek new york magazine um, Washington Post, New York Times, uh, Politico, um, we've got Alex Jones, we've got CNN, we've got USA Today. Look at, look at all of these stories that this, this media blackout, guys, the media blackout, it's just overwhelming. Wow. Look at, look at all of these all of these stories about the the hunter biden laptop um huh weird anyway uh yeah that's bullshit jim biden have been selling influence selling the influence of the white house oh and uh for those of you who don't know what a chud is um it is a slang term for conservatives that has uh, arisen after, uh, in loving tribute to, um, the classic 1980s film Chud. Uh, here we go. 
here's here's a here's a picture of it i th believe yeah just open it in a new tab uh this is a chud um it stands for cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers uh this is the the uh popular conception of conservatives on the left uh mostly because they uh are members of a death cult and uh sorry conservatives are members of a death cult um who want to cannibalize their fellow citizens and uh, otherwise undermine and destroy society um yeah now the more you know house to foreign governments specifically china and here's the real slap in the face that I think every voter needs to understand. Joe Biden, who wants to end the oil industry in the United States, end natural gas, end coal, all to go towards supposed clean energy, is the same man who is entering into... Uh, uh yeah, I, I, I like the air quotes here, but like... We literally need to move away from fossil fuels or the planet will uh, combust and we'll all die. So, like, maybe ending those things and, like, having to transition uh, jobs over slowly over a period of time uh, is, a, is a good thing to do. Because, like, man, it'd be really bad if we Thanos snapped our fingers and suddenly... Uh, just stopped having all of those things and there was no transition time like the damage that would do to our economy is unthinkable however if we take like a decade and slowly transition like jobs like hey guess what coal miners you don't have to just be left out in the cold you don't have to be taught how to code or anything like that you can just get a nice pension what if we just as a country absorbed the cost of putting these people on pensions for the rest of their lives do you think that they would complain about that? I mean, maybe some of them would. But the issue is that we need to be able to do that in order to survive as a species, uh, because the issue is that climate change is actually going to do way more economic damage to us in the long term if we don't do anything about it. Um, so, anyway, yeah, what, do I, what do I know about transitions? True, true. I haven't finished my transition yet, you know. I'm, I'm, you know, I've got a few, I got a few years of late puberty left in me, you know. Uh, what if climate change was fake? I mean, what if indeed? But it's kind of like asking um, in like the 1800s when like that one crazy scientist was like, "Hey, President um, Jackson, I would like to lead a mission to meet the the mole people." And President Jackson almost agreed to uh, funding a mission to meet the mole people. It's kind of like asking, what if the mole people were real? Um, an interesting hypothetical that's pointless because mole people aren't real. Um, so similarly, asking what if climate change was real is an interesting hypothetical, but it's pointless because climate change is real. It's man-made. And uh, all the evidence we have points to us being the direct culprits of it, which is actually really good because it means we can fix the problem and we're not just at the whims of, uh, you know, uh, planetary forces that are far beyond our control. Um, so this is actually a good scenario for us to be in because it means we can fix it. Uh, possibly being paid by Chinese energy companies who, guess what? They are not going to end their oil production, their coal. They're not going to end any any of those. End, uh, those. Fun fun fact: uh, Tesla is actually doing incredibly over in China. Um, China is one of Tesla's biggest growth mark markets right now, and uh, I would argue that China is probably positioning itself far better than we are to transition towards green energy than uh, than we are currently under Donald Trump. Uh, maybe Joe Biden can bring us back into uh, parity to some extent. And the other issue is um, the United States has historically benefited from investing in new and emerging technologies to an ex like a, a, an insane extent. So to kind of bypass the uh, the opportunity to invest in the upcoming uh, global switch to green energy is just putting us further behind other countries like China. So if you're worried about like the Chinese dominating the global economy, 
uh, you would it would be in your best interests to advocate for a shift to uh, prioritizing green energy in the United States. Types of energy industries, but Joe Biden is going to crush America's economy, kill our jobs, um, while he gets paid and his son gets paid and his brother gets paid by Chinese energy companies who will profit off of oil. And and if that is not a sl also. Uh, the Trump children also profit off China. Like, uh, I, I believe Ivanka Trump has had like 26 pat patents passed by China since she got into office. Trump patents. Nope, not parents. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everybody. I know I can't read this entire article, uh, but it's actually 41 trademarks. Uh, two companies linked to Ivanka Trump. Um, and the name of this article is Ivanka Trump's uh, trademark requests were fast-tracked in China. Uh, probably has nothing to do with, um, you know, the fact that she's uh, in the Trump administration, despite having no experience, um, and is uh, currently... Uh, getting government paychecks financed by the American people and using her position to profit herself rather than benefit the American people. But, you know, uh, it, it's it's worse when Hunter Biden does it as a private citizen for some reason. For some reason, private citizens doing business in foreign countries is suddenly a bad thing to Republicans, um, despite the fact that they overlook it for their own children all the fucking time slap in every single American's face. I do not know what is. Joe Biden is so corrupt, he should drop out right now. And guess what? It's a real story. It's verified. It's his laptop. It's his text messages. These are his emails. Hunter Biden is a troubled person who might be, might, might be in criminal trouble because of what's on that hard drive. More importantly, though, as you allude to, Joe Biden wants to be the president of the United States. And if what Hunter Biden, his son, said in that hard drive is true, Joe Biden is a corrupt politician who's gotten rich off of Iran, uh, not Iran, Iraq, Kazakhstan, China, and, and more, uh, and, and Ukraine. And he's acting like he's regular Joe from Scranton. So we don't have much time left, you know. Before I, I do want to say, like, oh, good night, you. I'm sorry to see you go. Um, just want to say, like, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm looking at chat. Like, what, what, to whatever extent Joe Biden is corrupt, and I don't, I, I don't have as much faith in uh the biden hunter biden laptop scandal as these uh conservatives seem to do seem to have uh but to whatever extent joe biden is culpable for profiting while in office or out of office you guys realize that like all of our politicians do pretty much the same things right like they become envoys to foreign governments after their terms in office they become um, wealthy uh, lobbyists after their terms in office. Um, Donald Trump, during his stay in office, has personally profited off of, uh, and this is even more valid because he didn't divest from his companies or holdings, um, has personally profited off of the business that um, foreign dignitaries have done in his hotels, specifically to curry favor with him. Uh, Donald Trump has specifically uh, benefited from uh, mysterious uh, foreign benefactors uh, for no apparent reason investing in his foreign projects. Like, for example, did you know that the Miss, um, like his, he, he puts on pageants around the world. Like he's famous for the, the Miss America pageants in the US, uh, but he does a similar thing in Russia. Did you know that every single one of his pageants in Russia ran at millions of dollars of loss until, weirdly, uh, the most recent one in Russia. Uh, a Russian oligarch happened to invest like $14 million into his pageant. And even though the pageant uh, ran at a profit, it still lost $6 million total. So pretty weird for a Russian oligarch, supposedly 
one would imagine pretty good with money to be investing in a uh, a a program in a um, pageant that has only ever had a history of losing massive amounts of money and turning it into the one profitable one and it was only profitable because of that investment and you know who gets the money from that investment donald trump and donald trump's family pretty weird for the president of the united states to not have divested from his companies and be directly profiting from behavior like that pretty weird I have more problem with that than Hunter Biden, a private citizen, uh, doing business in foreign countries. At least Hunter Biden isn't uh, a member of our government and taking a taxpayer salary. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so far I'm not being sold on this QAnon stuff. Before the election, Marjorie, can we make people understand who this guy really is and is also... Oh, and, and Dim Dumples. Uh, absolutely. Trump Trump is a fascist. We, we've, we've talked about that on this stream many a time. As soon as I figure out commands, we're going to have a fascism command where people who come in and say that Donald Trump isn't a fascist uh, can just put in that command and then uh, they'll, they'll be treated to another, uh, another video. So I don't have to keep going over how Donald Trump is a fascist. I've done it like five times. Uh. Hey, Kevin99GH, 99 guh. Um, welcome to the stream. I, I love my Canadian progressives. As a, as a Minnesotan, I consider myself, to some extent, an honorary Canadian. Oh yeah, you betcha. Talk about Bell and Busk. <laughs> uh, no, but I will talk about Elon Bussy. Um... Most politicians in Washington are fascists. They're just called capitalist when it's corporate fascism. True. Um, I, I make the argument that most conservatives in this country have been radicalized to accept fascism. And uh, most conservative politicians have fallen in line with open fascists. Um, I mean, Donald Trump literally wouldn't rent his apartment complexes to black people. So, I mean, like, I, I guess... I guess you you really got you really got Joe Biden with a Joe Biden quote on racism when Donald Trump was actually doing racisms with his companies. Um how is Minnesota? Minnesota's pretty based, my my dude. Um uh as far as like living in the Midwest goes, Minnesota has its problems, but um I would say it's probably best case scenario if you're in the Midwest, you know? Uh, I don't know anything about Trump awards from black communities. Let's let's take a look. Trump awards from black communities. Because I, I seem to recall uh, when he was talking to the uh, black caucus on the Hill, uh, him just dismissing black people who were coming to him with concerns. Um, let's see. Black... Um, all right, let's take a, let's take a look at his list of awards. Um, okay, humanitarian award, tree of life award. I'm not seeing, oh, he's in the gaming hall of fame. That's pretty cool, I guess. He's a gamer, guys. Donald Trump is a gamer. I guess I have to vote for him now. Um, multiple triple a five diamond awards for his hotels that's pretty cool he's in he's in the wwe hall of fame look at he was times person of the year in 2016 probably for good reasons i'm not gonna look into it he's in the friends of zion <laughs> museum um uh he got a golden raspberry award for worst actor um Oh, sh uh, Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Screen Combo, shared with his self-perpetuating pettiness. That's a pretty good award. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing these uh, Black Community Awards that you're talking about. Um, 
but apparent apparently uh he likes Jewish people. That that's good, maybe. Now go through Biden. I don't I don't care about awards though. I care about like their policies regarding the black community that they're going to do after they become president. All Donald Trump can do is talk about how he's going to protect the white women from black people. That and and I'm I'm only slightly paraphrasing, guys. Uh Joe like Donald Trump goes on stage these days talking about how he needs to protect the suburban women from low-income housing, and those are just two very, very, very slightly coded phrases for needing to protect the white women from uh, black men. You know, this is literally as old as like uh, "Birth of a Nation," um, you know, like like slavery narratives against black people. Um, yeah, I like the crime bill is obviously bad. We we talk about the crime bill all the time. Biden's 1994 crime bill is really really bad, but you know what? He is also going to actually do something about it if he gets into office. That's part of his criminal justice reform platform. Um so like yeah, he and Kamala have done a lot of harm for incarceration, but I think the amount of good that they could do at least somewhat would improve this country, like expunging the records and uh, releasing, uh, you know, nonviolent prisoners, um, and and uh, expunging the records of uh, if they were involved in like weed-related crimes. So I think that's generally probably one of the biggest uh, upsets to our current criminal justice system that would benefit millions of people. So I don't know. I, I I don't really care about uh, arguing the uh, politics of a crime bill from 30 years ago. I'd much rather focus on what they're doing now. Another problem, which is probably why Dems are pushing for it. Oh yeah, and Jose of Scranton, they, uh, Joe Biden has said that he made a mistake on the 1994 crime bill. And also, I just want to point out, Bernie Sanders also voted for the crime bill because it included the Violence Against Women Act. So like... There were also good parts of the 1994 crime bill. It's just that, uh, you know, the bad parts were pretty, pretty gosh darn bad. But if we can, at, to any extent, undo that now, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to undo bad past wrongs. Okay. For this mail-in voting stuff is a big problem. A lot, millions of people have already voted. Many of them would like to change their votes. Yeah. Well, you... Wait. What? <laughs> what? Stuff is a big problem a lot really is and is also another problem which is probably why dems were pushing for it. this mail-in voting stuff is a big problem a lot millions of people have already voted many of them would like to change their votes what i i haven't heard this argument before <laughs> uh apparently that's the problem with mail-in voting you can uh, you can change your mind um <laughs> huh uh, oh, Ashley, you can tell me more about that after the stream. I I'd be very interested. Um, but... <laughs> uh, millions of people have already voted, but, uh, you know, it it's before the election, so they might want to change their vote. There therefore, we shouldn't have mail-in voting. That's some real big-brained, uh, big-brained political shit right there. Uh, real, real smart man. Uh, it's a real big-boy point over here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, imagining being, imagine anyone being so undecided that they actually want to break current election law to undo their vote and vote for someone else at this point. Uh. Yeah, well, you know, here, here's what we have to do, Joe, and this is why I'm running for Congress. I got really fed up. Uh, I know who the Democrats are. I know exactly what they're all about because they tell me every day, but Republicans who <laughs> run on supporting and protecting our gun rights, who tell us that they're pro-life, who tell us that they're going to defend our freedoms and our constitution and our businesses. They're the ones that cave in every single time over and over and over. So the reason why I'm running wait, for Congress wait, in our Constitution, wait. who tell us that they're pro-life, Republicans who run on supporting Okay, I thought she said Democrats. Rights, I was very confused. Who tell us that they're pro-life, who tell us that they're going to defend our freedoms and our constitution and our businesses. They're the ones that cave in 
every single time over and over and over. So the reason why I'm running for Congress and I'm going to win on Tuesday, by the way, is that I want to be someone in there that never gives in and will not back down. And that's why the media hate. You know, you know, they say politics is all about compromise. I, I guess politics is really about being hyper partisan and never getting anything done. I guess, I guess that's what politics really is. It's me so much. That's why the Democrats are terrified because they know I'm going to go into Congress and fight for the American people. I would never, ever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought you were going to go into Congress and expose the, the massive Democratic child ring where they're shipping children across the country and drinking their blood in satanic rituals with Hillary Clinton. What's what's all this bullshit? I want to be in the swamp because I have a wonderful, beautiful American life that, that I've achieved by truly living the American dream. But, you know, it's it's worth fighting for because if people like me and you don't don't stand up and, and t truly tell the truth and encourage our friends and our family and our neighbors. Look, I don't care how uncomfortable you are with politics. I know you don't like talking about it, but you got to go in there and vote because freedom is on the ballot November 3rd. That's how we are going to make sure that we defend our freedoms next week. And it, it's, it's about to happen. Just as an FYI, um, people on the left are the, like lefties like me, socialists, we're the ones who want to give you the most freedom. People like her say that they're for freedom, and yet they will vote for policies that keep people poor, keep people stupid, keep people hungry, keep people homeless, and uh, perpetuate a system that just exploits you, uh, a, wor a fellow worker. So I actually want you to be free. This kind of a person just wants to shackle you while telling you how, how good and free you are. What a good boy you are being a, a wage slave. How how good for you. We've got five days. We have to do that. And then we have to send fighters into Congress that are not going to back down. Whoa, sending fighters into Congress sounds like a terrorist to me. And, and just give in because they're afraid of their donors or their reelection or because the media might call them a bad name. Hard you're fighting. It's Marjorie uh, Taylor Greene. Make sure that you, you go and vote for her if you're in Georgia 14. Uh, let's send her to Congress. Now, here are the controversies. Number one, you said you want to impeach Nancy Pelosi. Had over 400,000 signatures, I think, maybe even more than that. Um, there is a process to remove a member of Congress if, if they're out of line. I'm really excited so, so for this about section. That idea, and man, you got a lot of backing for that. People really liked that you said, we've got to get this woman out of there who's been there for like a century. It's time now to get somebody else in there because what she's doing. Whoa, whoa. Actually, this sounds, as a, as a lefty, this sounds great. I would love to get Nancy Pelosi out of office. Let's, let's get Shahid Batar in there. Uh, he seems like a really based man. Um, yeah, uh, also, uh, yeah, he he has a, a, a golden voice. I, I could listen to him talk about just about anything, okay? Doing is mismanaging the House of Representatives. <laughs> Absolutely. Nancy Pelosi is, is she's, she's basically the mindless so-called leader of the Democrat Party, the Socialist Party, um, who, who she, you know, she does the... Yeah, the Democrat Party, the the one that's known so much for its socialism, so much for its socialism that they repeatedly denied supporting a, a Medicare for all as a central platform. So so socialist that they would deny the entire country uh, the benefits of uh, you know having just health care covered for everyone. Um, but sh sure, they're they're socialist, champ. They're socialist. Um, and also, I, I love I love the fascist rhetoric. Nancy Pelosi is both a hundred years old and uh, you know brain dead and apt, but also somehow has maintained power for a hundred years in the Senate, or sorry, the House. Pretty pretty wild uh, how one could both be uh, incredibly weak and also incredibly strong at the same time. Pretty wild how your political opponents can do that, huh? When you're a fascist. The bidding of AOC now, because AOC seems to be the progressive pushing her way um, and pushing Nancy Pelosi's buttons. But, you know, Nancy Pelosi, if you look at her leadership, she has led us into nothing. She's led us into dividing our nation. True. And she True. led the impeachment hoax on President Trump. Well, I don't know about that. lie and cost the American taxpayers nearly $40 million. And that makes me sick.
And and so yes, I, I told the truth on, on my election night. I I called her a not so nice word and said we need to throw her out of Congress and we need people in there to get on board because let me tell you something. There's 435 members in the House of Representatives, and there might be a lot of people that are actually scared to pull that trigger, but I, I'm going to tell you there are tens and tens and hundreds of millions of Americans that, that definitely are behind me on that. Yeah. Even, even us lefties. For U.S. Representative, and I hope that it's going to be an easy win, but make sure you get out and vote. Uh, another controversy, of course, has to be this whole QAnon thing. What, what is that all about? Yes. Blood for the blood god. Let's 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 hit give it to us. Give it to us, okay? Marjorie, I want give it to us straight. What's the deal with this Q thing? Okay? I'm open minded. Tell me. Tell me. I, I want to know. Hit it. Hit me. Hit me. About I gotta tell you, you and I are like minded. We're both conservative. We're both Second Amendment and First Amendment people. I I, I love the I'm gonna talk about the video with But by, by the way, I I find it very funny that they put we're both Second Amendment and and First Amendment people, uh, not First Amendment and Second Amendment people. They they prioritize their guns over their words, and it's obvious even in this little these little subconscious ways that they talk. The gun in a second, because that's the other controversy. But what is this Q and I? I don't even know what that is. Is that something? Uh, no, I never even talked about it during my entire campaign. Um, it's just that like it's information that people share. Right. On, on the internet and they talk about the Russian collusion conspiracy theory lie and they talk about pedophiles like Jeffrey Epstein and for some reason the media has decided that's a bad thing and um, you know it was something I, I would post about a little bit here or there but I never ran for Congress on it but that's all the yeah I mean I was I was a QAnon person but I never ran for Congress on it I just think and believe these things I think and believe the same things <laughs> media wants to do is smear me with that and try to say it's a bad thing but yet they want to ignore antifa radical violent communist antifa they want to ignore radical what want to ignore antifa radical violent communist antifa they okay want to ignore marxist blm looting right i don't think she knows what these strings of words mean um okay also as we went over on this uh on this show um if you actually look at the data if you actually look at the data of blm protests um there was some earlier data that indicated 93 percent of protests were peaceful that's not actually accurate I've seen a more recent survey with, uh, sorry, survey, more recent study with more accurate data. I presented it on this show in a segment. Um, so the 93% number isn't correct. Do you want to know what the number is? It's like 97%. It's 97%. It's actually a little bit higher. It's like 97 point something. Uh, but um, yeah, the the violent Marxist Black Lives Matter rioters who are peaceful 97% of the time and the remaining uh, section where they're not peaceful is largely associated to violence coming from the police or counter protesters. Um, yeah, so, you know, the, those violent anti-fascists are really, uh, really turning up the heat in these, uh, in these protests. Pretty, you know, it's kind of a shame, really. The one, uh, the one attributable Antifa death as a revolt as a result of someone from Antifa. Um, it's really a shame that we're not actually going to be able to uh, hear what happened there because the person who allegedly committed the murder uh, was uh, gunned down by police, and our president, uh, you know, kind of praised the police officers for not wanting to take him alive and do do justice. Uh, you know, uh, apparently you, you get, you, you're entitled to a trial unless the president and police don't like you, in which case, fuck you, and uh, you get shot and you die. Um, but, uh, you know, what, whatever, it's, it, it's not like it's fascist or anything to kill people without a trial. Uh, because they belong to your political opponents. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty weird that, uh, whenever violence at these, uh, protests is brought up, 
No one ever talks about uh, right-wing counter-protesters or plants who instigate violence, like the uh, the right-wing uh, far-right boogaloo boy who burned down the Minneapolis Five precinct. Uh, pretty, pretty weird, pretty big-brained that so much of this violence and arson seems to be attributed to uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, Antifa protests, despite the overwhelming evidence that most of that violence is perpetrated by uh, people who are conservative and on the right. Those concerned citizens, you know? Um, pretty, pretty odd, I would say. But anyway, let's, let's, sorry, open mind, open mind, guys, stop, stop being so biased. Open mind, we're gonna, we're gonna listen to what she has to say about the, uh, the violent anti-fascists, um, and the, the Marxist Black Lives Matter movement. Um, again, I don't think this lady has read Marx, but, um, you know what, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, maybe, maybe, who knows? We'll, we'll see. Rioting and burning business. I mean, as we know, by the way, uh, businesses are worth more than black lives in the conservative worldview. Um, so, so what if a few black people get shot by police? Uh, you gotta protect the businesses. You, you, that businesses and money are more important than priceless lives. Uh, apparently, I guess, according to conservatives. If you don't put the dot com on it, according to Mark Cuban, it's not really a radical group. I mean, that's how nuts it is. So the whole QAnon thing was really about issues, and the issues are very important. Uh, it doesn't matter what the what, I, I don't know what that entity is, and I don't care. But pedophilia is a problem, and certainly we need to stamp it out. And yes, Jeffrey Epstein is is a key figure in that. And who knows? Maybe Hunter Biden will. F I, I'm a show host, and I, I invite people onto my show without doing any research about their backgrounds and or, or ideologies. Uh, communism, I don't know what it is, but it sounds bad and scary, because it's not capitalism, the thing that I know and love. And also, I don't know what this QAnon thing is, and I didn't research it prior to this show, so I'm not really sure what to ask you about, but... You mentioned that pedophilia is bad, and I agree with that point, so I guess I agree with all of your questions. They seem very valid. Um, however, the, the, the Black Lives Matter burning down businesses, that... Oh, that's so bad. To be clear, pedophilia is very bad. We should, we should do more to stop pedophilia. Uh, we could probably do more to stop pedophilia if we actually held, uh, for example, conservatives responsible for the things they do. Remember how the Speaker of the House, uh, a con like, uh, was a pedophile for, like, 50 years? Do you remember that? Dennis, uh, Pastert. Uh, that's right. That's, that's right. This, this, this gentleman, uh... Let's uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look here. Yeah, look look at how old this man is. Look at look at how look at the aged wrinkles on his face. This man was allowed to be a pedophile uh, because he held a, pr a position of power in the Republican Party for a very 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 long time. Maybe. If we started by holding uh, people like him accountable before they were able to hold office for decades, you know what, maybe maybe I'd believe it when these uh, QAnon people said that they were coming out of the shadows to uh, battle pedophilia in, uh, you know, the, the, the elites, you know? But they, they have to hawk these conspiracy theories about how um, it's not just, like, a problem of like rich uh wealthy assholes um uh, being pedophiles and like traveling in the same circles and like spreading their pe predilections for pedophilia no they have to talk about how there is an elaborate conspiracy by hillary clinton uh to traffic children in like the basements of pizza shops in washington dc 
and uh, how they're using um, like IKEA listings or whatever to uh, sexually traffic children and how it's part of a satanic ritual to like keep them young or whatever. It's like, bitch, you can go into Silicon Valley and like buy the blood of young people for like a thousand dollars a bag. They're, they're not like, it's not like it's hard to come by uh, this young blood program. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, and if you think I'm making that up, by the way, here's the FB, here's the FDA officially warning against buying young blood. Uh, so, you know, it's a thing that happens. It's a thing that rich people do, uh, but they don't need to buy sexually trafficked children in order to get their hands on young blood because, you know, they have more wealth than God. So, uh... Like, all of this is just, like, a, like, weird wackadoodle conspiracy mongering. Um, I mean, done randomly, the rich are vampires, but mostly for wealth. Uh, there's just been, like, a, a trend going around, really, where it's like, yeah, if you get blood infusions and you're old and you get blood infusions from young people, it will make you younger or more energetic or whatever face something like that i don't know as the hard drive stuff comes out but issues about antifa which is a real organization it's very organized they are they're looting they are riding they are <laughs> killing people in the streets and blm the group black lives matter right it's a racist organization that wants to get rid of police and have anarchy and marxism in our streets okay let's let's tackle a couple of these claims here it's a racist organization that is its main platform is demanding uh, justice for the murder of black people. The, the, that's the main platform of, of Black Lives Matter. It's just that the murderers of black people in the specific cases br like brought by Black Lives Matter happen to be police officers. So should we hold police agents of the state accountable for murdering civilians i would say yes um and it's weird to me that conservatives like the party of small government uh tend to be like well no obviously the police should be able to murder whoever they want whenever they want for whatever reason they want which is a weird stance to take like especially with like the brianna taylor stuff like um like with brianna taylor you had Police, armed agents of the state, breaking into a home, uh, breaking the terms of their warrant in order to go in unannounced into a private citizen's home. And uh, when they were rightfully um, seen as intruders because they didn't announce themselves um, and were in plain clothes um, and were fired upon, they fired back and killed an innocent civilian. Um, and uh, I, I feel like that should be a shut like an open and shut case for a lot of conservatives, but, um, you know, it was a black person who got shot and killed. So it's not that big of a deal to conservatives. They, like the right to bear arms only goes as far as the color of your skin for a lot of people on the right. Um, and, uh, I, Tyler the Worm, I just have to say, I, I see your comments in chat about BLM being counterproductive and creating more tension and dividing sides. I just want you to know that the same rhetoric was used in the 1960s against, like, Martin Luther King Jr. And, uh, those people were just as wrong then as you are now. So maybe you want to rethink your position, okay? Like, if you're parroting talking points from 1960s uh, segregationists and uh, racists, maybe maybe rethink your uh, your positions, okay? I would encourage you to do so. Um, so, racist, I would say no. Um, what were the other two things? I lost my train of thought. It's a racist organization that wants to get rid of police and have anarchy. Okay, get rid of police and have anarchy. Um, so... Black Lives Matter as a whole isn't advocating for the complete abolishment of the police. Even in, by the way, the scenar the like the fantasy scenario wherein the United States completely dismantles policing as a concept, I need you guys to understand that uh, policing is a relatively new institution in society. 
True. True. We didn't actually always have police. Society, in general, hasn't always had police. We've been able to get around not having police officers for a very, very, very long time in human society. Now, you might argue that having police is, to some extent, good, and I would argue maybe that's the case. However, uh, there are different ways to implement policing or police-like institutions that don't resemble remotely what we have now. And there are ways to uh, protect communities that are more equitable and less harmful than what the systems we have now. And when people are saying abolish police, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to call 911 and have someone answer who is able to come and help you. It just means that maybe the way we are doing policing right now is bad and we should dismantle it and restructure it from the ground up. Now, and that's in the case of abolishing the police. When people start talking about defunding the police, what they're talking about is taking some of the funds away from police that are used to buy, like, you know, that extra helicopter that they don't really need, or like that armored vehicle in that rural district that is never going to get used and is just going to get covered with dust. They're just getting it because it looks cool, so they can put together a video to, like, metal music where they're, like, going over small bumps like a monster truck rally, you know? Uh, or, you know, because because here's the other thing. Here, here's one of the secrets about policing. Having more police on the streets doesn't reduce crime. Because here's, here's the thing about police. Police are reactionary. Police respond to calls. Police don't have, like, some precog system where they uh, are dispatched before crime occurs. Um, they are dispatched after crime occurs. So... To a large extent, having more police doesn't stop crimes. That's why the argument for defunding the police should really be called reallocate money away from the police or, you know, but, but like that doesn't really roll off the tongue as well. So like the argument for defunding the police would be, and this is my position, you should have uh, like a separate, uh, a separate organization. And I, I cheekily call this organization Police 2. So we should we should properly fund police too, and police too is just uh you know has no armed officers you know isn't sent into violent situations necessarily, um, but they're trained in de-escalation, they're trained in social work, they are essentially social workers, and uh, they have access to psychological professionals, they have some of that training and background, um, and instead of calling nine one one, you call nine one two. 912, also an emergency number, but the people who show up don't have guns and aren't authorized to use deadly force. Um, you know, I think, I think personally, if I had a problem, I would much rather call 912 um, to have that solved unless, uh, you know, there was like an intruder in my home trying to murder me like the movie Halloween. Um, you know, like that's the, like I never needed police with guns in my entire life um at all so maybe it would be more effective if we had social workers responding to the vast majority of calls and that way police officers who are trained to use deadly force who do carry guns um are only dispatched to situations where um that sort of training is necessary that way we have the best of both worlds we have a properly funded a uh, force of people who can respond to like a homeless person um, and are able to properly deal with that and direct them to services that might be useful or helpful to that person. Um, and we aren't dispatching like a, a meat headed police officer with the gun who's just fresh out of the two week long academy training who uh, goes and meets with this homeless person who is slightly unstable and winds up pulling a knife because they're afraid of somebody who just showed up with a gun. And uh, then the guy with the gun tell like draws their gun, pulls it on this uh, homeless individual, which causes them to freak out and they try and defend themselves. And then the homeless person gets shot. This is a thing that, by the way, happens in the United States of America all the time. Um, so maybe, maybe if we had a system where we didn't have to shoot, these kinds of people, we didn't have these altercations at all. Uh, maybe that'd be a good one. 
<sighs> and yeah, I also think maybe having less police officers would reduce the rate of domestic violence in this country since 40% of cur cops currently uh, commit domestic violence. That statistic that we've known since the 1990s. Anarchy and Marxism in our streets. So raising those issues is very important. So what you're saying is that the media diverted from that and said, oh, look, she, she believes in some nut job. The media needs a bad guy because the media are Democrat activists and yeah. they're the mouthpiece of the Democrat Party. So they refuse to tell the truth about communist Antifa. They refuse to tell the truth about... What about Antifa is communist? Because Antifa isn't a group... I mean, maybe they're anarcho-communists. You could maybe make that argument, but Antifa doesn't really have an economic aspect to it. But let's hear the rest. I'm sorry, I did interrupt. Marxist BLM, which is funded on Act Blue, the Democrat fundraising platform, and, and these policies and these so-called ideas, the true violence that's happening in America is completely supported by the Democrat Party, and that's the party of the media. So the media needs a new bad guy and they have lazy just for just for reference fox news is the largest media outlet in the united states and it leans very far right all all of the largest online uh news uh sorry all the largest like uh news commentators like tim pool or ben shapiro uh, they're also incredibly far right um, you know, they talk about race war, they talk about uh, upcoming civil war, like they masturbate about this stuff all the time. Um, yeah, and like uh, Mig Migizi, uh, you, you bring up a good point. Like there are a lot of people who, like we have a, we have a term for it. How, how wild is that? We have the term suicide by cop. You know, getting the cops called on you uh, when you don't want to live anymore so you don't have to shoot yourself because you can rely on the cops to shoot you for you. That was a weird way to phrase it, but like that should be seen as incredibly messed up. Um, Also, uh, Johnny Johnny Mills, I do have to clarify, I am not a tanky, I do not support uh, tanky ideas, because I think we can achieve a lot of, uh, a lot of socialist revolution through um, peaceful means. Um, and I am for keeping it peaceful for as long as possible, because most of the people who talk about, like, you know, a violent revolution are really just, like, masturbating themselves, kind of like how, like, a... 10 year old is like man i would totally stop a bank robbery if i had a like a superpower or something like that 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 seems to be like a, a lot of the the um talk of revolution i see on the left and uh you know i, I would maybe be in favor of a revolution if we could be sure of winning it but um we can't in a modern american society so i'm only for peaceful uh peaceful re revolution and I think we can do it. I think we can actually do this relatively easily in a way that keeps up our current standard of living. Um. <laughs> um, I No, I think that if we bash them uh, politically, we can reform the system in such a way that uh, fascists cannot come into power again. Um, I mean... I, I would like it, but also uh, I, I have a feeling if we tried our revolution right now, it, it, would not, uh, it would not go well for us, my friend. Um, so, I mean, like, likewise, good luck in your attempt to overthrow the state and institute a, a, lefty, uh, a lefty program, um, because it's, it's not going to work. <laughs> but, you know what, I think what would work is, for example, advocating for programs that slowly shift us into a worker co-op society. I think that would work. I think you can get a lot of people on board with that just by arguing the merits of worker co-ops. I think that you can get a lot of people on board with that, talking about how much it would improve their lives if they had some degree of control over their working conditions. I think that um, 
there's a lot of good arguments to make for decommodifying housing being like more efficient and effective for an economy than uh, having just entirely privatized housing. Um, and uh, I, I think that um, I think that a lot of these programs can be done in a way that they are so overwhelmingly popular that uh, they can't be undone. Um, kind of like kind of like how part of the reason conservatives, even fascist conservatives, fear Medicare for all is um, they, they, they fear it because if it ever passes, it's not going to be undone. It's going to be incredibly hard to undo. They couldn't even undo the shitty version of health, a health care plan that is the Affordable Care Act. Like they, they couldn't do it. And they had a super majority in our government. Um, so I think that uh, I think that a lot of these uh, progresses that we can make that will tangibly improve worker lives. Um, I think that those kinds of progresses can't really be undone very easily. And um, we can win eventually by pursuing those changes. Um, Look, my my dude, I I will worry about Trump if he manages to win this election. We we talked about it earlier. I'm I hope my my hope is uh, that when we stream on election day, um, we we see how it turns out. If Trump does win, then we are in a completely different ball game, and I need to rethink uh, how we how we deal with that. You know, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You know. Um. Oh, no problem. I have my dude, I have had so much patience with people who come into my chat. My chat, I I've talked with uh, a um, like a while back. I debated an um, <laughs> an ANCAP uh, who came into chat and like started talking about like the real reason he was in favor of anarcho capitalism was uh, he wanted to uh, be able to own women because he hated women so much. And that conversation took a long time to get to that point for him to just be like mask off. Like, yeah, I hate women and I would like to own them as slaves and rape them. It's like, oh, okay. Like, I have a lot of patience to talk with people, but I'm glad, I'm glad you're an honest actor. I'm glad you, you, you know, we, we can, we can agree on some things, you know? And I have a lot more patience for leftists than I do for, uh, conservative trolls. Yeah, tiniest boop, I believe that we can take over the Democratic Party. Like, especially, like, I, I believe there was, like, some story that came out about AOC today uh, that heavily hinted that she was preparing for a 2024 run. I think that AOC could be a great vehicle for progressive change in this country. Partly because she's very social media savvy and partly because she has a lot of good underlying principles. She's not as far left as I would like, but she can get us way farther left than America has ever been before. And I think that it should overwhelmingly be viewed as a good thing and a prospective victory on the horizon. If we can get Biden through now. Um, Oh, done randomly. Joe Biden is not going to be going up for re-election. He's he's very old. Um, I, like I believe he'll be in his nineties by the end of his term. So I like by the end of his first term. I don't think that uh, they're going to. Uh, I don't think he's going to go for uh, ninety-five and still the president of the United States. Um. Oh yeah, I didn't think he'd be doing this election either, but you know what? Uh I I don't I don't think that a 95-year-old has the energy to run for office. I I just I do not think that that is possible. I'm willing to grant it to like an 80-year-old, 80 plus year old, you know, but uh yeah. Wait, am I am I off by how old he is? Let me Wait, just let me check real quick. Uh Joe Biden age Oh, he's 77. Okay, for a second I thought he was 87. Okay, maybe he would run, but it would definitely be as, like, at, like he, he's said repeatedly he's only interested in one term in office. I kind of believe that. The dude's been angling for the presidency for, like, his entire life. After serving one term as president, I, I, I don't think he'll be interested in another one at, like, 
81 years old. But we'll see. You know what? Maybe. Maybe. in and put their sights on me. But I'm going to tell you something, Joe. I could care. Oh, yeah. Everything this lady said, by the way, prior to this. Um, wait, do I consider the intercepts piece on Kamala protecting Catholic pedos conspiratorial? If it were, weren't from actual dirt journalists, I think people would assume it was QAnon stuff. I haven't looked at the piece myself. Maybe that's something I'll, I'll look at tomorrow. But, um, I, I would say I, it's within the realm of possibility. Like, the Catholic Church has a large degree of institutional power. It wouldn't surprise me if it was true. Um, but also it it doesn't it it doesn't change my opinion that you should vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris at like at at this point like i i do not care about anything that they've done in the past i care about their upcoming policies and i care that uh they are the only viable option uh in uh contrast to open fascism in the united states um so Oh yeah, I was going to talk about that suicide sticker, leaving his fans in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Donald Trump did abandon his, uh, we'll, we'll cover that after we finish this interview, but he, he left a bunch of his people out in the literal cold to get hypothermia and die. Um, I, luckily none of them died, but uh, the metaphor is apropos. Care less, because here's the deal. Nobody cares about what the fake media has to say, and none of their dirty little articles and their name calling is going to cause me to back down one single bit. Man, it would be so convenient for me if I could just say that anything that disagreed with my worldview was a lie. That'd be really convenient, wouldn't it? I can I can understand the appeal of this kind of uh like rhetoric. Uh, <laughs> I can under I can understand the appeal, but uh also, wow, imagine not even trying to fact check anything because any of the facts you check you aren't going to believe any of the sources you find. I, I'm genuinely curious what, like, what these people believe is real news as, as opposed to fake news. Because a lot of the time, like, if you look at the links they post, they'll either link to mainstream media news outlets, or they'll link to, like, no-name, small outlet places that you've never heard of before with that don't cite any sources and are just like... Yeah, a Muslim immigrant raped a girl once. And it's like, okay, but when and where and how, like, what, how, is there any, like, way I can check this? Like, is there, do you have a link to, like, the city's website with, like, the, the booking account? No, they don't. They don't. Oh, and yeah, I'm not talking, Johnny, Johnny Mills, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about QAnon types. Um... Uh, yeah, I'm, like, The Intercept is definitely not a no-name institution. Running for uh, Georgia 14, Republican out of that great state. Make sure you go and vote for her if you're listening or watching in that in that district. One last controversy was you dared hold a gun. Was it an AR-15? What was in that in that video? AR-15, it's a great gun. Yeah, I it is. I've got one. I, I love my AR-15. I've got, yeah. I've got several guns. Uh, there's not, AR, my AR-15 has never gotten off my, uh, gotten out of my gun locker and shot anybody. It just doesn't do it on its own. At the but I've thought about it. Oh man, have I thought about it? I would, I would love to use that AR-15 to mow down school children, Muslims, anybody. <laughs> like you realize, like a lot of conservatives, like just spend their time fantasizing about when they could pull that gun out of a gun locker and use it to murder someone, right? The AR-15 is not a bad thing. It's just a piece of machinery. It's a tool. But you dared hold one. It's just a piece of machinery. It's just a tool that was specifically de designed to kill people efficiently. And you dared say, Antifa, don't come to, to, to my part of Georgia, and you cocked the gun, and, and you were serious. The media wanted you to back off. Many places dropped that video from their websites because of the alleged uh, um, violence in it. Forget Antifa actually organizing on social media. Oh, uh, Clindy, Clindy guy 66 welcome to the stream, by the way. Just saw you pop up. Um, we have a lot of veterans in my community so far. Like... I, I, no joke, about half the people here are, are veterans, and also trans. It's weird how that works out. A lot, a lot of queer veterans. Um, 
But you know what? I love it. I love I love all you people. Um, also, congratulations on the reforming. I, I find you a, a very fascinate fascinating specimen. Um, the key to understanding these people is that they are unattached from reality. They are told what to think and say. It's a sick cult. Yeah, enti entirely. Like, these people will talk about violence and death committed by the left, but then they are just completely silent as 200,000 Americans die, and they are completely willing to laugh it off. Um, but, uh, you know, one person dies in a protest who uh, aligns politically, and they're like, oh, well... Uh, obviously they're communist Marxists and want to destroy the country. Uh, but also don't you dare bring up COVID-19 because, uh, it's a joke and not real and a conspiracy. And, uh, 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 you know, they're, they, they're willing to die for, for this stuff. Um, but yeah, the, these people are a joke. Um, like, yeah, I, by the way, I, I am in favor of gun ownership. Surprise, surprise. I'm, I'm a socialist. I'm in favor of gun ownership. I think that there are a lot of things that we can do short of like outlawing guns that can, uh, improve our country. Um, there are a lot of, there are a lot of things that are common sense and widely supported by the general population that I think we could implement to, uh, make this country, uh, quite a bit safer. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah i johnny mills i totally understand the tanky sympathies um however i would encourage you um for for, for example i myself i don't know what the end game like utopian political ideal is right like my position is and and always has been a very pragmatic one which is why I push for market socialism. I think it is an achievable goal. I think it is one that we can reach, maybe even within my lifetime, which would be amazing. Um, and I think that it is an idea that can be backed up by a lot of empirical evidence that we already have, you know? Um, and whereas like a lot of like anarchist thought, for example, I'm, I'm very attracted to example, for, for example, like anarcho-communism, um, but I'm not willing to say that I necessarily have all those answers figured out, as opposed to me being very firmly in the camp of thinking that like market socialism is probably uh, how we can best operate to achieve improvements in people's lives. And that's really what I care about. I want to, I want to improve the, the uh, conditions of the worker in this country. Um, hey, when people say it's easy to make it, to get a gun and do mass shootings, those people have never gone out to get one clearly. I mean, it depends. Uh, there are certain situations in which it is very easy to get a gun. Um, like I know, for example, that I have friends that live like 10 minutes away from me that I could just like go into their house and like get a gun, no questions asked, and then go use it for whatever. Um, like, I, I think that in a lot of places in America, things are like that. Um, you know, you don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be about buying guns in order to enable people to enact, uh, acts of mass violence, you know? Um, hello, Mel Gibson 22. Uh, welcome to the chat. As, as we all know, uh, Mel Gibson 22 is the actual handle of the real Mel Gibson. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, immediately sus. Immediately sus. Uh, anyway, let's learn more about QAnon, guys. The problem was Marjorie Taylor Greene holding a gun. Fill me in on, on what went through your mind when you saw that go down. <laughs> well... You know, one of my favorite things is our Second Amendment, Amendment, and yeah. that'll that will be my number one issue. I'll be the most pro Second Amendment Congresswoman in in probably U.S. history. And and okay, that's that's a tall order to fill. In order to be the most pro Second Am Amendment senator in um, American history, you would literally have to arm babies fresh out of the womb, like they just pop out. You give them a small Glock. Um, I I don't think you can get more pro Second Amendment. And I will be fighting for our gun rights. 
here's the deal. An AR-15 is not scary. You know what's scary? It is people like Antifa and BLM that are attacking innocent people, burning their businesses and attacking police officers. Man, it's, it's a real good thing that Antifa and BLM, uh, being as violent as they are, somehow haven't gotten their hands on AR-15s. Pretty, pretty good that that hasn't happened, huh? Uh, but I guess in it, I guess Marjorie Taylor Greene, in it, being the most pro Second Amendment uh, person in American history, uh, would want them all to have AR-15s. I, I guess, right? I mean, they're like Antifa and BLM are American citizens too, so like, obviously they have the right to bear arms as well. This is kind of a, a confusing message to, to get here. I don't understand. Officers, night after night, killing good people like David Dorn and, and many others who, who have done nothing wrong. That's terrifying. Anyone can kill someone with their fist, a hammer, um, you name it, a, a, a nail gun. That, that's exactly why we um, arm all of our cops in the United States with hammers. Uh, the deadliest weapon, obviously. A, a car. Exactly. But you know what? I have an AR-15 and I have a whole bunch of other guns. And the reason why I have them. Wait, but why don't you have, why don't you have hammers? You're leaving yourself open to the deadly hammer attack. Is because I'm guaranteed the right to bear arms. And as an American woman, I am so proud to have that freedom. And that's a freedom that every single other person in the world would give anything to have. And so if there's a bunch of violent criminal thugs that were to ever come to my house or my business and try to hurt me or my children, you, you bet I got the right to hold an AR-15 or any other gun that I own. And but what about hammers, okay? You talked about how hammers are incredibly deadly weapons. Um, why why aren't you using hammers instead of uh, AR-15s and guns? I, d I don't understand. And I'm allowed to defend my family and no, no one, the media or any kind of government or any kind of government person is ever going to tell me how many, t how many bullets I'm allowed to shoot to defend myself if they're trying to kill me or my kids or destroy our property. That's right. You fire 10 bullets, pop, 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 into an intruder. Then you walk up, you fire 10 more rounds straight into their skull. Except, wait, that, that's a violation of the law because you already neutralized the, the threat with the first 10 bullets? And executing someone is illegal. Wait, you mean there are, there are limits on what you can do with a gun? Oh no! What about the Second Amendment? I should be able to pepper anyone just passing within well, spitting distance of my property with uh, cold hard lead. And you know, if that is offensive to anyone, they're the ones that have their priorities in the wrong place. Couldn't agree more. Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's running for District 14 Republican, great state of Georgia. I look forward to you getting to Congress, and hopefully you can shake things up like you have in the campaign trail. Give me 30 seconds on your prediction for the national election next week. I feel good about your election. I want people to go and vote for you. What about the... I, I do have to point out that during this entire interview, her entire platform has been, I'm not a crazy person. Um, I'm going to fight against the Marxist socialists in the Democratic Party who have signed a manifesto, and we looked at that manifesto. It's not even called a manifesto, guys. Two articles called it a manifesto. Two two of the mainstream media articles that she uh, talks about not being uh, accurate. Turns out that Joe Biden, uh, Bernie Sanders' manifesto is a set of task force recommendations. It's a lot less scary when you realize it's task force recommendations and not a communist manifesto. Um, so she's said conflicting things. I'm not crazy. Um, you know, the, the trust the mainstream media, but only when it agrees with you. Um, also, uh, I will be the most pro gun person ever. So her, that that's her platform, I guess. But let, let's hear her final thoughts. Okay. House. What about the Senate? What about the presidency? If you can quickly. President Trump's going to win. I know he is. I know it in my heart. There's too much momentum and everyone is fighting so hard. Joe Biden doesn't have boat parades. Joe Biden doesn't have parades, period. Joe Biden has a bunch of depression little circles. As, as we know, 
the one true way to measure whether or not someone will become president of the United States is the size of their boat parades. We live in such a dumb times. What a clown world, my dudes. What a fucking clown world. <laughs> also, uh just just for our our new viewers, here are here are uh Donald Trump's projected chances in the election uh currently. They've been slipping nonstop over the past week. Um and uh, it's it's looking increasingly likely that Biden might even get up in the projection of like 90 percent uh, during this upcoming election. So we'll see. There is a better chance that Biden will sweep the election by 400 electoral votes or more than 400 electoral votes than there is for Donald Trump to actually win. So, you know what? We'll see. We'll see what happens. OK, guys, I'm interested. I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. Well, let's uh, let's uh, get the final memes. Uh, like what, what the truth of these these boat parades? But he gathers up people, and then he talks to about fifteen people. No one wants to vote for riots. No one wants to vote for shutdowns, and no one wants to vote for mask mandates. President Trump's going to win. I'm concerned about. Yeah, no no one wants to vote for shutdowns and masks that will save hundreds of thousands of lives, uh, and cause irreparable damage to our economy. Uh, by Man, who 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 would want um, to save hundreds of thousands of American lives? How unpatriotic must you be to save hundreds of thousands of Americans? Wow, wowie! And man, I I wasn't aware that riots were part of the Joe Biden platform. I I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know that he had a pro riot position. Interesting. Out the house because you know I want Nancy Pelosi gone. And I definitely don't want to work under her leadership, um, but I think we'll definitely hold the Senate. Well, I, listen, I can't tell you how much. Oh, uh, and just as we, we will definitely hold the Senate, says crazy QAnon supporting lady. Huh. Weird. There's a 75% chance that the Democrats are able to uh, win control of the Senate. So we might be seeing a supermajority in the next week, boys and girls. You might see that. Um, also, uh, Johnny Mills, uh, yes, the, the Uyghurs are an oppressed, uh, minority, uh, by the Chinese state. I, I need, I need to clarify something like as a socialist, um, China is not a socialist state. China is an authoritarian, highly centralized planned economy, which is different. And they engage in capitalist behavior. Um, so China does capitalism far better than the United States does currently. Um, and that has led to a boom in their economy. Um, I would also say that um, though their economy is booming as a result of their leadership, uh, this is coming increasingly at the cost of uh, social uh, freedoms. Um, for example, uh, the freedom of speech is highly controlled and policed. That's why they need a uh, nationwide firewall around their internet communications that likewise monitors uh, internet communications and uh, finds anyone who's remotely critical of the state. Um, and uh, yes, they have been rounding up the Uyghurs and putting them in uh, concentration camps where they are being tortured, killed um, in the name of re-education. I would encourage you to take the uh, take the propaganda of authoritarian states with a grain grain of salt. Um, I would likewise say that um, well, they so they just want to randomly oppress Uyghurs for no, no reason. No, the reason they want to oppress Uyghurs is that they are a, a religious group. In China, religions are highly uh, repressed. Um, it's it's seen as anti-communist even if China's communist in name only, um, but it's seen as anti-statist if you uh, are against the, uh, the, the party line, which is officially atheist. So in China, they will oppress you, for example, for being Christian or uh, being 
I, I, I think that there's some leeway given to some forms of Buddhism. Um, but for, for the most part, uh, yeah, if you, if you're a member of uh, a religion, you are, uh, considered highly undesirable by the Chinese government and the Uyghur population has, while it has, it has historically lived in China, the expansion of China's state power has, um, reached them. They, they're typically, uh, considered kind of like, um, I, I don't know how many of you people know this, but China is an incredibly ethnically diverse and incredibly large country. Um, so there are a lot of more rural populations that have unique cultures and unique um, religions and stuff like that. Um, and the Uyghur population has uh, finally kind of been um, reached by the Chinese state and there's been a massive crackdown on them over the years that has them now being put in concentration camps. Um, yeah, so it's... Uh, it's not good. It's it's not based. <laughs> the same the same way the uh, the imperialism done uh, by China in Africa is also not good or based. However, it is slightly better in some ways than uh, what uh, the U.S.'s imperialism looks like in Africa. Well, yeah, we we do get a lot of anti-China propaganda, and that's true. Um, and for, for my part, I do my best when it comes to China to talk about the things that China it does well. For example, uh, there is good, there's a good reason a lot of people in China are very pro-China. And it's not necessarily because of the speech crackdowns. A lot of it has to do with the way that China has run their economy to the extent that now, within the last, like, 60 years, you have people who had to cross mountains for uh, to get health care for their children. Uh, their children have now grown up and can, like, buy cars to uh, drive their elderly parents to the doctor now. Like, that's that's a pretty incredible advancement when you talk when you look at it in the context of, like, uh, uh, the wider world. However, they've achieved that largely by doing a deal with the devil and uh, engaging capitalism. So uh, there, there are a lot of upsides to what they've been doing economically um, that have benefited their people. However, uh, socially, they have had they they've done a lot of crackdowns and uh, things that are objectively not good. Especially if you are if you're an honest lefty actor. I think any honest lefty should be able to condemn the bad things that China does, as as well as be able to see some of the good things. And uh, definitely in the bad category is like building concentration camps uh, to persecute people who are uh, religious minorities, um, or uh, you know, uh, controlling free speech. I I think these things are very bad, um, and I think that doing those things is antithetical to what a leftist actually wants to achieve with social reform. I think that if we lose sight of uh, the idea of socialism being the empowerment and bettering of workers and working conditions, that uh, we cease to be socialist. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, what, that, that's my position. Yeah, and no one's in, no one's advocating for infinite lockdowns. Um, well, this was a fun rabbit hole to go down. Uh, this I've been streaming for two and a half hours. Jeez, Louise. All right, let's let's take a moment to look at handsome young Joe Biden, who was definitely not a twink. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, Joe Biden was not the original femboy. Um, We'll, we'll find him eventually, though. We'll find the original femboy. Um, I... Okay. I have I have a challenge for you, uh, never socialism. I would like you to find a video, uh, find a video of Nancy Pelosi dancing in Chinatown for me, please. 
I would like to see that very much. Mostly because I would like to critique Nancy Pelosi's dancing moves. But also because I highly, highly doubt that this actually happened. So, um, yeah, if you can do that, uh, I, I would be very uh, grateful to you. <laughs> Water filter salesman, I really hope that your name is a reference to The Great Pretender on Netflix. A wonderful anime series. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I do have to say, if you're trying to trigger me, um, it's not going to happen. I've had people in my chat literally advocating that they should be able to enslave women and rape them uh, because they believe in uh, anarcho-capitalism and, uh, you know, they, they, they really love the free market. Um, so, like, I, I don't get triggered. You're just going to be frustrating. Uh, breadlines are a fun social event you get to spend at time outdoors. Did you learn that, by the way, in the, uh, the COVID-19 relief efforts? Because, uh, you know, we have breadlines in the United States right now. That's a thing we have under capitalism. You, you realize we have that. We, we do breadlines extremely well in capitalist societies. Um... There, we, literally, literally, some cities have had to shut down entire highways to major cities um, because the bread lines stretch for miles at this point. Like, it's a thing that's happened. You can look it up. You can actually see the pictures of these bread lines. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe you know that from personal experience. Is being <laughs> depressed? How stupid these people are being... Uh, I, you know what? Depression can be uh, 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 something, uh, a symptom of being triggered, I suppose. Yeah, it's just not the fun w reaction they're looking for, you know? Um, aw. Dan Snacks, thank you for stopping by. I really, you know what? I really hope that you enjoy whatever amounts of stream you see from me. And uh, I'm really hoping that I can play uh, Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2 soon. Maybe even Demon Souls. I, I would love to play the remaster. I I enjoy talking about politics and playing games. It's just all the political news recently has really overwhelmed my ability to play games while I talk about it. <sighs> oh wait, who talked about incels? So peak communism is worst case... What? Uh, my dude, uh... Peak communism is worker control over the means of production, uh, the decommodification of certain parts of the economy, and uh, the disillusion of the state. So I don't think you think communism means what it actually means. Um, oh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the incel stuff about uh, people. Yeah, I mean, I love capitalism where I can uh, use my toilet paper to barter for a month's rent. You know, that that's good stuff. They're predicted. By the way, they're predicting more toilet paper shortages. I heard so. Uh, prepare yourself for that. It, it's possible. It could be happening. Um. Let's uh, see. I'm I'm consolidating my 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 tabs here. Very very important resource right here. <laughs> 